Welcome to this one-off video actually on ship design using Ruler Wave 3 or in Ruler Wave 3. Uh, it's a, this is one of the most fun aspects of actually playing the game and I, th I guess it's the main focus that you're going to be having just as you begin, as you get more technology and as things sort of develop for you, you will be then wanting to go and build up your fleet and your fleet will always be behind the times to a degree. So it's sort of one of these things where it becomes probably the most interesting part of uh, playing the game because you then design the ship you then build the ship and it takes years to, for that to actually happen. And then finally, when there's, there's a war that you then become involved in, you then get to test the ship out to see if it actually satisfies what you need to do. And of course, all the other powers are also running behind the times as well. They're, they're developing certain technologies. Like, for example, in this game, we've, we've only all we've been able to do by 1892 is to get the first level of our machinery development, which is the YST engine. And this now, we know that this also matches the engine from um, uh, from Austria-Hungary, which is, we've sort of identified them as being our main threat in the game. And so we want to sort of keep ahead of where they actually are. And so we're equal now with this engine. This engine doesn't actually, I don't think we can look at anything there. If we can go to details. Yeah, so the this is the research progress in machinery. And so the YST engine just gives us a 1% weight savings on machinery. It doesn't give us anything extra, anything special. And so uh, certain technologies will, other technologies will sort of become available at certain times, like very, very soon. In fact, if I just click on OK, if I just go turn, let's just see. Oh, hang on. This is cool. OK, so our top spies managed to get hold of the blueprints for the French battleship, the Trident, currently under construction. We haven't seen spies yet in the, in the Let's Play. This is a standalone, but it's still also episode 10 of my Let's Play series. So there we go. We've got a spy. I'm just hoping that we end up getting the dreadnoughts. This is what we've actually now been able to find. This is bigger than our ships. It travels faster than our ship, for, as an example. It has less turrets. Um, it's only got one turret each. Two 12-inch, though. Four eight inch, uh, eight five inch, lots of uh, lots more armor than what we actually have. It's just interesting to see what else happened. So our spy, our Matahari, has been able to uh, to get information from the French. So we've actually got like a a low level of uh, spying on the French, and this is the first of the actual spy missions that we've seen coming through. Ah, perfect, perfect, perfect. So we're getting new research areas. I'm glad I did this. I probably should actually call this an episode 10. I might just rattle through and actually make this into an episode 10 because now I'm showing up things that are not part of ship design. So let's just go through. New research area discovered. Our scientists expect promising results from the new research area of fleet tactics. And so this is now a new area. Again, I won't spend too much time. Let's just rattle through and try to get through a year or so of um, development. I'm going to try to keep everyone pretty happy and friendly with us. I'll just go closed in this instance. Um, again, if we look at research, we're now going to have, uh, where is it, fleet? Uh, I'm not sure where we see that one, actually. No, I'm not seeing it there. Anyway, that's... Um, oh, fleet tactics, there it is. So we've now got the new... The new area, so no research results in that particular one. Now we're waiting also for um, to get information on destroyers because that will be coming very very soon. Let's just keep on ending this, these turns. Uh, okay, one of the major shipyards is short on orders and is offering to build another one of the CA Marco Polo class in 22 months at 10% discount on the total price. I'm actually really happy with that one because it's a good design. It's actually worked out fairly well. Excellent. We'll take the offer. We'll do that one. What we might do is we might just tweak. This is the Giuseppe Garibaldi. I might just shorten that to Garibaldi. So this will be the Garibaldi design. And um, Prime Minister wants to hold an international naval gathering of a uh, sailing regatta in competition. Uh, this will strengthen our international standing and lessen tensions, but the money to finance the event will be taken out of the naval budget. What is your reaction? This is not a good time for such an event. All the money needs to be allocated to buying warships because we don't have a hell of a lot. The Navy supports this. Uh, this, this our prestige goes up, our tensions go down. Look, I'll, I'll do this one. I will actually do it. We've, our yearly budget has come way, way down now that we're in peacetime. Let's just do it. Uh, the rebellion in the Salibs and Malacas continues. We do have a couple of ships on foreign uh, foreign station, but it's still actually just continuing on. Keep on keep on rattling through. It's now July of 1892. 
Uh, we finished construction of a six-inch uh, coastal battery in Dalmatia. That's okay. Our monthly budget is now slightly under. Our scientists are happy to report that they are uh, close to mastering improved design calculations. Good. So we're now starting to sort of see more and more technology. So actually, Austria-Hungary increased. <laughs> they're uncomfortable with controlling Dalmatia. So they're going to start to start to make uh, um, waves again. Um, I think what we might do, this is the ships that are under construction now. We've got um, one's coming in 10 months, one in 21 months. Um, we'll, I will actually look at this. So I might actually do this episode. This is going to be a ship design episode. Uh, but I'm going to make this one into a ship tweaking episode. So let's go and do that. Let's go across and right click on our Marco Polo design. We can look at a few different things. In fact, sorry, if I go back to ships in service. We've got the Marco Polo back out through here. If I go and right click on this one, we've got things like we can view the data to see what it's actually got. It's got four seven inch guns, uh, like two, like it's got two guns in each of the actual fore and aft turrets, uh, eight six inch guns. It's a good design, this ship. It's, it's actually quite good. Uh, so there's not much that we would need to change with this ship. So what we'll do is we'll actually go and tweak this one. We'll use this one as a, as a tweaking exercise. And so if we go across and right click on this one, instead of viewing the data, if we if we open the design, we can basically build a whole new design around the ship. You can see through there, for example, develop from and 10% change the Marco Polo. So we can then change everything, but it then becomes a whole new class of ship. We can't retrofit our ships by doing that. Uh, this becomes a new, a new class, and so we would then need to suggest a new name. So we're not going to do that, but what we can do is we can right-click on this one and then go into Open Design for Rebuild or Retrofit. If we're going to retrofit this. So certain things we can't change. The class name stays the same. This is just basically a, a newer version of it, a, a different iteration. The displacement stays the same because we're not changing the hull. We're going to be just tweaking the little bits and pieces that we can change. Uh, some of these things we won't be able to change as well. Um, like for example, the uh, the speed is going to have to be consistent. The horsepower is, is in there as well. Uh, we can't change what's going to happen with with this one in through this side. Uh, we can replace machinery, so it replaces the engines of the ship, only available during rebuild. This will increase rebuild time and cost considerably. Now we don't need to do that because we already have the cost savings. If we needed to change things up then we could do it but we don't need to so i'm not going to worry about replacing the machinery we're not we don't have enough technology that we've researched to really warrant doing that uh, it would save a little bit in space but nothing much else um, now things we actually were missing we didn't have anything for the belt extended which is a bit of a problem the belt coverage is normal now i can't change these because this is part of the actual ship itself i can i can change the upper belt i might just go and put a little bit extra on the upper belt, and uh, you can see that it hasn't actually changed. Actually, we don't need it because of what this ship actually is. But there's nothing. There's nothing there. It didn't change the weight at all, actually, or did it? It changed down in here. I might still do it. I might still just grab that one because one of the troubles we have is we've got not enough anywhere really. We've got the four in there for the turret, which is actually this is all pretty damn good to be honest. I actually quite like this design. Uh, I don't think we can change the actual the armor scheme, the flat uh, deck on belt. So that's going to have to stay where it is. We could change the accommodation if we really wanted to, into from spacious through to cramped. But we'll just keep it on normal again. So this will then deck out, you know, the number of um, number of quarters that would then be on the ship. But this is actually fine for what we sort of need. Um, the range we can't change because that does replace the machinery and the loadouts and things. Uh, we've got bulge. We've got additional deck armor. Um, I won't worry about those. So additional deck army is a way to retrofit old ships to protect against uh, plunging, fire, and bombs. And bulge, this is more for when we have uh, aircraft involved. And bulged is um, bulge ships gain extra torpedo protection and some flotation, but they do lose speed. Uh, so I'm not going to bother with that one so much. That's just the, that's going to give you more um, bulkheads, not bulkheads. I forget what they're called. Battles, I think, uh, to sort of try to sort of make it so that if torpedoes do hit. You've got better survivability. We've already been hit. The Marco Polo has already been hit by a torpedo and we survived. <laughs> uh, the guns, we can change the caliber of the guns. We can make it, for example, go up to eight inch guns. We still have more weight remaining. So we can go this way. I can just, just double check. Rebuild error, actually type A, illegal caliber, 
Uh, valid combinations for this turret are nine inch or smaller one in, uh, one gun or five inch or smaller in the three gun. So I can't actually tweak that one in the, same, in the way that I've just done that one. Let's just go and cancel that one. Just go back down to seven and have a quick look and that's fine. So note, turret A, main gun, is uh, less than 9 inches in calibre in turrets with, uh, without reliable training and elevation gear. So the rate of fire is reduced by 20%, but that's we've got that anyway. So we can change it. If I change it up to 9 and then change the actual guns to uh, decrease the guns and uh, decrease the guns there. So we have a single gun now at 9, at nine calibre. Um, this means we'd have more firepower uh, coming back in, but just with less guns. But this is actually still actually okay. We just go and have a bit of a look. Everything's okay. This actually works for us. And so I might as well do that because we're not getting the uh, massive rate of fire there anyway from the seven inch guns. Uh, I don't know if I can take it up to 10. If I try this one in here, the quality goes up. Yeah, rebuild error. Can't actually do that one there. So. That's something that we may decide, let's do that. Let's just change the, um, so we have a single nine inch gun because it mainly comes down to what we can do with the secondary guns anyway. Like we've got six, a six inch, uh, which is great for these secondary guns and the, uh, and the number of eight, if I try to ramp these up to say 10 or 12, if I go to say 10 and then just see if that's gonna be allowable. Error, when rebuilding ships, you can install additional secondary guns of six inch caliber, but only in single mounts. So that becomes a bit of a problem. So these are going to have to be um, single mounts. Um, if I just go into a 10 and just try this one, I think that's a, how this would then sort of work. So we'll, um, we'll just try that one. Yep, all okay. So we can actually build more away from the casements, so away from the protective areas on the side of the ship. So these get added then on top of the ship. So we'll just go and cancel that one. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see them get added, actually. I'm not sure where they got added into. <laughs> if we go and up. Oh, there they go. Yeah, they're being added onto the side. <laughs> so they're getting tacked on. But again, they, by adding them on, we can now, we're now overweight slightly. So we can just sort of bring them backwards a little bit. Now, we've got the tertiary guns. We have um, three inch. We've got 12 three inch guns. And so this actually works in fairly well. I, I wonder if we could, if we reduce the size of like the actual caliber of those, we end up with a lot more weight, which means we may be able to push this one out and get more six inch. So we've still got 12, but only two inch guns. So again, like we're sort of decking this one out in weird ways, but it's sort of, it may still work. So we're just tweaking what we can with these retrofits. Let's see if this would work. Yep, all okay, great. And so we've now changing uh, the Marco Polo in different ways. Uh, secondary gun armor, can we improve that? Nope. So uh, it's oh, considerably overweight. So it's the it's the overweight was the problem. Um, let's not worry about that. I just wanted to see if that would actually work. So we'll just go back to two. If we go to 2.5, no, it goes overweight again. We can go a little bit overweight, but really you don't want to. So there we are. The actual, the additional armament, we actually have these. Um, now, if I start to delete a mount, let's just delete one mount and just see if that actually allows it. Yep, actually that does. If we get rid of the torpedoes and maybe put some swivels, uh, we may be able to do more with the torpedoes. So let's go and cancel this and get rid of, uh, clear all the mounts out. So clear all the tor torpedo mounts. If we now try it, we should have an error because I think it does, oh no, it's still actually all okay, even without torpedoes. We would like to have the torpedoes, so let's go and add a mount. We've got submerged mounts, which is what we've been using so far, but let's actually have them on the deck and actually so we fire them out from the actual deck itself. We've got a uh, forward center line swivel mount. We've got a, um, a center line, uh, like we've got position C, which is going to be in here somewhere, I think. Position W will be back in here somewhere. So the center line swivel mount. So let's just go with that one through there as well. We'll just go with two and we'll just click on OK. And that's going to then reduce uh, the weight remaining. Where did they go? I didn't quite see them where they got positioned on the actual ship itself. Uh, error. Okay, these um, may only be used on ships of 2,000 tons or less. Okay, so I had that one wrong. Um, design is not legal. So, okay, so those actually are not going to work. Uh, let's go and uh, clear those out then and um, add the mounts. So we, we did originally have forward, port, starboard and aft that's sort of what we ended up having 
So I don't know if we can do, we'll find out which ones we can actually go and do. Let's go and try a P and a Q. Uh, get rid of the R, just click on OK, and see if they can be put on these ships. Nope, we can't do them either. So uh, actually it must be, a, because this is a bigger ship, we just, just can't, we can't put these, we have to be low to the ground, well, low, to the, low, to the, low to where we are. So we can't, I don't think we can put swivel mounts on these. Let's just clear the mounts out and um, we will add back in the original. So the port, starboard, whoops, and aft. So we'll just go and do those and check again. Yep, all okay. So that's actually all right. So we've got the submerged, basically meaning they're built into the actual hull. Less effective, but we were able to get some of them off uh, during the actual fight so far. So um, that will then do us, I think. I think we'll just make this the new Marco Polo, save and finish. So all okay, all right. Re uh, re uh, re uh, rebuild design save as Marco Polo, uh, uh, 1892. Do you want to go to the rebuild dialogue? Yes, we will. And so we actually now have the rebuild dialogue in through this side. Um, that's actually where it sort of is for the Marco Polos. Just click on OK. And so we now actually have um, the Marco Polo has now come back out of here. And we now have ships under construction. And you can see there it's still going to take some months to rebuild the Marco Polo into this new design. And the other guys as well. I don't know if we can rebuild these. Um, we can scrap them. I don't want to be doing that. Um, I can accelerate construction, but no, let's just leave it where that is. So they're going to come out. Once they come out, we can then do them as the retrofit version or the rebuild version for 1892. So again, we're just tweaking the things by doing it that way. So this is, uh, I guess, still relevant to what we're actually doing. Let's just go into ships in service. By the way, another thing we haven't spoken about is how many ships do we really need? Like we're going backwards now. Our monthly balance with what we're building is going backwards. Do we need to have all the ships uh, available to us? And we probably really don't. So we certainly need, like the foreign station ships we do, uh, so we'll keep them going. But the, these um, active, active fleet, um, for all of these pretty much, I can probably get rid of um, the certainly the these bottom two in through here. I'll just press Control and click on the ones that I don't want. Uh, let's go and take that one off. We'll keep a couple of the uh, others, but we just, you know, if we go into wartime, I'll probably want to have three of the light cruisers. So let's get the Nino Brixio. And as far as the um, as far as the battleships are concerned, I think I will keep the new Regina Margarita available to us. But let's get rid of a couple of these old ones. We'll keep the two flagships, which have seen so much action, and uh, just get rid of the other two. So we'll. Pop, we'll put all of these back into... Now, we've got things, for example, like the reserve fleet. This will then keep our maintenance at about 50%, but we'll then have to work them back up again in times of war. But this that does save us money. The other thing we can do is mothball them, where it takes even longer to build them up, back up. In fact, we might actually do a, a, a little bit of both. We'll put them into the reserve fleet. Do you want to put all these ships into reserve ship status? We'll go yes. But let's go and put in uh, one of these... We'll put this one into, instead of the reserve fleet, we'll put this into the mothballed. And so that's now going to be uh, mothballed down. So that's the another of the Italia designs. We're going to be replacing these. Um, I'll, just, I'll just let a few more texts come through, and then I'll do a, a big episode on, on shipbuilding. Anyway, that's sort of now got our fleets. You can see there that we're now back into the positives again because <laughs> we're not playing as much in terms of the, um, of the maintenance of the ships themselves. Uh, let's go and end our turn in here. Finished construction and the sleeves, that's good. Our top spies managed to get hold of blueprints of the Austrian ship, the Habsburg. I was interested in this one because we saw that they had just started designing this ship. So we'll now find out what this one has got. There's another 5,100. This is very close. This looks like an upgrade of the Monarch class that they have. It's still got the nine inch uh, belts, one and a half inch deck. It's got a two inch conning tower, three 11 inch guns. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, eight, six inch. I'm actually liking our new Marco Polo to be able to take this guy on. Um, I think that you know it, if we if they get some shots in with the 11 inch, we're going to have some troubles. But I think that we're doing okay. So we'll actually just allow. Well, that's fine. Naval gun research. Better nine inch guns have been researched. The quality has now gone from the nine inch down to negative one, which is good. So um, does that mean that our Marco Polos in a in our new Marco Polo may not be what we want? <laughs> 
Cool, 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 cool. Actually, I'm glad I didn't just go and in, blunder into um, into development at this stage because that's that's a, a nice change for us to have a look at. So we've now got turns coming back through, research breakthrough and ship design to improve design calculations, 1% weight savings on the hull. Awesome. Again, I'm glad that we're waiting. Um, so uh, we don't get the change by just retrofitting up the, the other ships. Um, yep, so we've got intelligence reports coming back through. Nothing much really in there. We'll just keep on keep on moving through. Uh, so best brains are hard at work and studying the fascinating challenges of destroyers, but there have been little progress so far. That's a problem. I really need the destroyers. We need to get hold of these because these will be able to do a lot of work in the Mediterranean. Like these will be a, a massive, a massive addition for us. Um, so we'll just go close. We'll just keep on sort of rattling through. Our top spy minister get hold of the blueprints of the Russian ship. So you can see there with our, you know, we're still trying to get established with our spy network in Russia, but we actually now have the um, the armoured cruiser, the Bayan. We'll have a bit of a look to see what it's got. 5,700, so it's less than our ship by a fair way. Uh, two 7-inch guns. Ours is now going to have two 9-inch guns, so ours is going to be a lot better. Six 5-inch, we're going to have 12 8-inch. So in comparison, ours is a much, much better ship. They've got the two torpedo tubes, which are submerged. We've got four. Um, and they're less armor. So again, they're, they're, I think they're the same speed as us. They may be slightly smaller. I think we might, we may have a 21 knot, uh, uh, speed. Anyway, that's fine. We can, we've got more information about what's happening overseas. It's all very, very valuable. The top spy managed to get blueprints of the US ship, the North Dakota. This could be interesting. So this is a, uh, 11,800. So a lot bigger than our ships, only 16 knots, so same speed using four 13-inch guns. Now, we don't know if that's if they've got a trouble with 13-inch guns or not. They may not do. So this one should actually still sort of work out okay. They've got no... The belt armour that they've got is not as good as our belt armour on our, on our crappy design. Uh, we don't need what we've got on ours. And so we will actually fix that in the next episode when we, when we do dedicated through there. I've made unexpected advances in armour development. Great. We're getting a lot of research done now. So this is cool, really cool stuff. We've ah, oh, fantastic. We've actually now got Harvey armor. Okay, we've got we, this is really important for us because now it is worth redesigning the ships uh, because this is actually a whole other way of looking at armor. Scientists are happy to uh, report that they're close to mastering loading mechanisms. So we're, the scientists are really working their asses off in this episode, which is fantastic. We're now at the end of 1892. We'll just close this one, have a quick look at research. We look at the Harvey armor, for example. This is, this is actually new armor. So improvement of armor quality. And um, there will eventually be Krupp armor as well. So um, that's Krupp, it's K-R-U-P-P. Uh, and uh, so the Harvey armor is a, big improvement in terms of the of the effectiveness of armor and so when we now when we start to build our new ships we'll be building them with this armor in mind and this is a big big thing to to it this is a this is a major um uh, benchmark uh, for us to reach and so this is actually very very cool i just really want to get these destroyers <laughs> come on game give me destroyers uh, tensions are rising a little bit around the place, but nothing bad so so far. We're now into 1893, and we still haven't got destroyers. Destroyers, I think, were tradition um, were technically supposed to come in 1892. Um, Austria and Hungary and France have signed an alliance. Damn it! Okay, that's a problem for us because if we now end up at war with one of them, the other one will pro possibly join in. So we're going to have to now work our way around that. That could make the game quite interesting. There have been a political murder in the Balkans. What is your, your advice on how to handle the crisis? There we go. What, what Has that ever happened before? <laughs> Demand that the guilty are brought to justice, even at the risk of war. So we get uh, budget prestige, but tensions go up everywhere. There should be a di diplomatic solution to the crisis. So we get budget goes up, tension goes up a little bit, but prestige goes down. Our prestige is now 30, so we've got a lot to play with there. Nation stupid enough to put their fingers on the Balkan should um, should realise that they can get burnt. So really, um, getting the budget up would be good for us. I think we might take the, the prestige hit just to try to raise our budgets up. Now, this is going to be a global rising. Uh, okay, we've got fire control. We've got telescopic sights. Wow, guys, we really are now starting to sort of uh, get into the into the uh, 
era where we do need to go and redesign our ships. So the next episode will definitely be, and here we go. We've now, uh, our scientists have started research in the fascinating new research area of uh, subdivision and damage control. These bulkheads and uh, baffles will end up sort of allowing us to um, uh, to protect a little bit better against torpedoes. This is a new a new area that we've now discovered. Uh, the rebels in this uh, have been eradicated. Great. So we actually now do control the Salibs and Malacas uh, fully. Um, so this alliance is a problem. This alliance is a bit of a problem in through here. Hopefully it'll... it'll. I mean, everything is still fairly okay. If we just close, we'll watch everything rise because of the Balkans. Yep, so a few things. Uh, Fran uh, sorry, Russia and, um, and England went up, um, which we've got to be careful of. Okay, we'll just end the turn in here. There's uh, been an uh, internet, inter internal upheaval in Morocco. If we send an expeditionary, course to uh, expeditionary force to restore order, there is a chance that we, uh, we can take it over as a colony. However, this may well increase international tensions. Uh, now, this is traditionally the French sphere of influence, so someone must shoulder the burden and guarantee order in this case, so tension will go up, or we should not enter on such an adventurous course of action. I'm thinking because I... Um, Actually, we get on pretty well with France. Um, I, we might go that way, actually, and just see if we can actually get hold of it. Uh, orders are short of Morocco. The place is now under our administration. So we actually did jump at it, and that's going to that's gonna then upset a few of these. Yeah, wow, look at that. Austria-Hungary didn't like it. Research breakthrough, so turrets and gun mountings, loading mechanism. So the uh, gradual national rate of fire improvement. So this is just going to slowly improve the rate of fire of our guns, which is... Um, I don't think we have to so much uh, redesign to get this particular one, but that's all okay. So we're going to have to, be, again, be a bit careful of what's happening in through here. Um, I'll just go a couple more, and then we'll uh, then we'll call this episode to a close, and that way um, there are insufficient ships on foreign station. Okay, we now need to um, we now need to go and put another bit of tonnage on foreign station. So if we just go back to our ships in service, in fact, if we go to the map. West Africa, what's going on there? And Southeast Asia. Oh, West Africa, yeah, we now have to go out here and have ships that can be available out through this side. We just need to get a little bit more tonnage out that way. So if we just go across, and I don't know if we can just go straight and put one of these, <coughs> excuse me, guys, onto the foreign station uh, aspect. So let's just go and see if this will actually work to foreign station. Um, now the crew quality is poor because they've been sort of uh, on, you know, they've been away from any, anything. But that should, yeah, that's now worked. That's fine. End our turn. During maneuvers, one of your ships has opened fire on a fishing boat from the USA, sinking the boat. Now we've got a, we've got a medium. We're sort of middling along there with with them. Um, offer full compensation and make a public apology. Um, I will actually do that. I don't. I want to just keep things sort of fairly friendly. So scientists report that they are well on their way to understanding improved shipbuilding steel. That's good. So uh, we're doing well. Our scientists are doing quite, quite well here. Uh, we've got a lot of money. I'm sort of thinking I might just do one more turn and hopefully we get destroyers. Uh, our ship, the um, the Vettor Pissari, is commissioned into the Navy. So this is another one of the... Um, of the others, so okay, we need to fill a post as naval attaché in the Vatican. There's a prestigious appointment that no officer should, should, officer should ref, would refuse. There must be someone not on fleet duty that we could send, or I have just the man for the post. Um, it won't really matter that much. I think I might do this so I can actually then go and select somebody. So we've got, for example, like this captain down through here of the Vittario Emmanuel is brilliant, and I just I wouldn't mind just getting somebody. Um, I can send commanders. I might send... Where's our... Um, this, this sounds below average, but it's got other skills. Where's our, music, where's our musician? This one here. This is kind of okay. Best brains are hard at work trying to uh, study the fascinating challenges of improved turret construction. There's been little progress so far. So this is we're sort of now getting stuck there a little bit. So now we actually have uh, a couple of ships that we need to replace the captains of. So we'll just go across, go to commander, uh, assign new commander, and we've got an above average. Now this is going to be for the, I'm going to put, which one should we pop, pop in here? I think I'll put in the captain, 
I've got a couple of two that are above average. Uh, actually, this one's in charge of the Italia anyway. Let's go to the Borsini on, on this guy here. And for the uh, for the new one that's working its way up, the new Marco Polo, we'll uh, go and throw another captain in here. So assign new commander. And this will be the above average captain in through the site. So we'll just go in, in that one there. That way, because I'm, I'm these are going to be much more effective ultimately. Now, one thing we could do through here um, is we can just go back in through and do a rebuild, rebuild the ship to this version and just click on OK. So we'll get those happening in through there. And with those ships under construction, we can now see that we've got two more months before the next, before the original Marco Polo comes out, and now tw 10 months before the Vettor Pisani comes out as well. And then we're going to have the Garibaldi as well coming, th coming through uh, fairly soon. <laughs> so that will be the um, in 12 months, and then we'll have to do another retrofit on that particular design. I love this. It's so detailed, the actual game itself. I'm, I'm glad I actually didn't just jump into design because we've been able to get like a lot of technology coming through and a lot of other things I've been able to then talk about as well in this episode uh, which is great okay our top spy managed to get hold of blueprints of the US ship the um, the armored cruiser San Diego what have we got in this one this is 6,800 tons 21 knots very similar to ours four eight inch guns we're going to have two nine inch guns on ours um, yep yeah, similar actually it's sort of similar but we have um, we have more we have more of the six inch guns and less of the, the well, we've got two inch guns now on ours. So interesting. Scientists made unexpected advances in explosive shells. If we uh, research breakthrough explosive shells, we now have melanite, gradually increasing shell damage. This is all good stuff. This is all good stuff. And uh, we now have naval re uh, gun research. Uh, 11 inch guns have been researched at quality negative two. Again, this is good because um, we can now sort of, like, this is exactly where the um, where the Austrian-Hungarian uh, forces actually are with their guns. We've got 12-inch guns as well. So we probably wouldn't worry about the 11-inch, but we can actually, if we do want them, they actually are there. So we're going th really rattling through, and I'll do one more. <laughs> we're halfway through 1893. We still haven't got destroyers yet. Um, Marco Polo has finished her reconstruction. Just click on OK. Well, crews of our young cadets is planned. What ships should take part? Some of our newest and most powerful ships, um, some average ships, some of our older ships. This is going to be the budget will go up, but the prestige will go down. Now, um, world tour. We can't send our Mediterranean class ships. These SAs can't really do it. The Regina Margarita could. Um, I think I'll just do average average ships. I'm not sort of. Uh, I don't really want to. I don't want to raise tensions at this point in time. So just click on, on OK. Uh, they're working on the problems of sloping armor deck, uh, but success has so far eluded them. I'll talk about this in the next episode as well. So we haven't actually got that one just yet. Let's do one more, one more turn. Unless you get holds of the British ship, the uh, Resolution, currently under construction. Now, it's still too early to, for the actual dreadnoughts to be under construction, but we can get a bit of a feel for what they're doing. This is a 14,400 ton battleship, four 13 inch guns. Their, their 13 inch guns are probably gonna be much more effective than ours, 10 six inch, 22 two inch, wow. This is a big ship, uh, so this is quite quite powerful. Again, when we look at the uh, belt armor, ours is 14 inch, and this battleship, which is bigger than ours, has got much, much better distribution than what we actually have. So again, just playing the game, actually we've managed to get prints, uh, blueprints of the Austrian ship, the Kaiser Karl the, the Seventh. This is an armed cruiser. This is interesting because this is the sort of ship we're gonna be going up against. So this is 6,800 tons, getting close to what we are. Same same speed as what we've got. It's got four seven-inch guns. Again, we're better than that. We're better with the the eight the the, um, the six-inch guns. They've got 12 three-inch. So they do their tertiary guns are better than ours. Again, the uh, it's about the same as what we actually now have as well. So they're getting better and better with what they're doing. But uh, it's only got local fire control. I think we're going to be able to do better than that. Uh, and report that they're well on their way to understanding improved steel building steel, ship building steel. I think that may be Krupp, Krupp steel. I don't know if we'll get that this early. Um, so it's made unexpected advances in armor-piercing projectiles. Uh, research in through there, armor-piercing armor projectiles um, has, has been improved. Wow, we're just finding so much stuff. And it's, this is one of the 
interesting things in the game is when do you design? When do you go in an actual design? Because every month that we don't design is a month that we're going to be building, trying to get on top of things. And um, I think we better start doing it fairly soon. In fact, it will be next episode, no matter what we do. And so I just report that we've suffered a temporary setback figuring out the concept of naval of the Naval Academy. Uh, we are corrupt after all, so why not? Uh, let's have a quick look at the at what happens in through here. We'll close, and that was good. Note, I just rather than reading all of that, we'll just let that one go through. One more turn. Japanese ship, the uh, the Hatsusushi, is under construction. This is a eleven thousand two hundred ton, for twelve inch, seven inch, and three inch, thick thick armor. Um, interesting. Again. This is so much better than ours. Okay, we've now got improved shipbuilding. So we now have another weight saving on the hull, actually. So it's not actually specifically Krupp steel or anything like this. So we get research breakthrough of, of hull construction. That's good stuff. I think it's time, guys. I don't, like, we don't have the destroyers, and I would love them. They will come. It's October. Oh, let's just go to the end of the year. <laughs> Uh, Austrian ship, the uh, the Donau. Let's have a look and see if what changes there. They've got still local fire control, four seven inch. There's not much difference there between what we saw with the last one, so this is actually okay. But they are they are building up. How are we going with our ships under construction? Still got a few more months yet before we get the new Garibaldi. Um, let's just go and and we've got a lot of funds now built up, so we are really are ready to build. We're ready to start to build the new battleships, which we'll be uh, doing fairly soon. We'll just go to the end of the year. Uh, revolution in, in the African countries left us some some of our national stranded. What should we do? Send a strong squadron to bombard the capital and turn out until our civilians are released. So budget, prestige, and tension goes up. Join an international squadron uh, sent to contain the violence or resolve the crisis via diplomatic means. Now, I think we'll do the international squadron, and it'll be interesting to see who actually ends up um, going against us with this one. Maybe Germany, actually, I'm guessing. Just close that one. Oh, no, it was Austria-Hungary. So they were the ones. Now, we're getting close to going to war again with them, and I really don't want us to go into war <laughs> at this point in time. We're in December. Let's go to the 1st of January, or the, the start of, uh, of 1894, the year that we, we, that we redesign our fleet. Uh, okay, colonial crisis with Austria-Hungary has arisen. Uh, you asked for recommendations. What's your advice? This is where we actually would end up going back to war with them. And I really don't want to because, we, you know, they've got an alliance with, I think they've still got the alliance. You can have a look at the Almanac and look at Austria-Hungary and just look at the national data. Um, where are they up to? I think we're we're better than them in a lot of ways. So we've actually got ahead of them in, in a lot of what we're doing. They've got seven battleships now, which is uh, more than what we have. The dock size is only 9,000, so they can't build big ships. And this is going to be a, an advantage to us. I can't see there. Um, in fact, what we can do is we can just go and just click on OK here and then just go to View All Relations. And we can see there that they do actually have this alliance uh, with France. And so... Um, yeah, so tension between Austria and Hungary is, is zero. They do have the alliance. That's an issue. So I'm going to take that into account, and I'm going to go, we must safeguard our interests if it leads to war, we must prepare to fight it. It would be best to avoid a war right now, but prepare for future conflicts by strengthening our navy. Now, that's going to give us tension, which may still lead to war. We're not ready for war and should make concessions. So I will do this one. We're going to lose tension. We're going to lose prestige, but we're going to get, gain budget. So we're down to 28 at the moment. This will make it 27. Uh, new research area discovered. So our scientists have now have stated research into fascinating new, new research area of torpedo technology. Uh, that would be a good one for us to push, actually. Um, you know, operating in the Mediterranean, I think that that would actually be a good one. So we'll um, we'll just go and close that one. And we're now in the 1st of January. I'm just going to go to research. And I'm going to go and go into torpedo technology. And we're going to raise this one from high to, um, sorry, from medium to high. The other one, the light forces and torpedo warfare, I'm going to raise that one to high as well. Uh, it's one of these things, like it's it's sort of, it, it, some things will go up, some things will go down. But this is actually fairly good. Like we've, um, you know, we've got some advances. We've actually now got melanite back in through here. If we go, go to details, gradual increase in shell damage. So that's something we don't have to really worry about. 
the armor piercing shot again it's going to be gradual armor piercing uh, so just slowly over time improved design calculations we look at this one through here one percent savings weight savings on the hull which is actually fairly substantial um, the loading mechanism is going to be i think gradual again the yeah, gradual rate of fire improvements it's all good stuff guys all good stuff the telescopic sights uh gradual national accuracy improvements so i don't think we get to pop those on but we do now have telescopic sights on the on the ships um, improved ship building seal again this is just going to be another one percent weight savings on the hull um, so we're getting we're getting a couple of things there that are now going to make our hulls more effective the harvey armor is um is improvement of the armor quality overall this is actually a big big deal and then we've got the engines back into here as well one percent weight savings on machinery so already now, just by waiting until this point in time, if we can stave off the, uh, the you know, the, I guess the aggression of Austria-Hungary, we'll ultimately be able to then go into a, into a future war with, uh, with much, much better battleships. And so we'll start to replace our old ships with these new ships. Our old, our old battleships are terrible. Uh, but we will be able to, because we're going to have, like, there will still be bigger tonnage than the Austrian-Hungarian forces, and we can build them to defeat their battleships and we'll do exactly that so there's a lot of good things coming up in the next episode when we start to do our, our ship designs and um i actually just want to play the game and play the game and play the game because now it's this is this really is the most exciting part of the game uh the combat superficially looks like the most interesting and i think that if you're new to the game it's it's what you think it will be fun to play but it's now the planning phase of what we have with the technology is where we sort of end up going so i will leave this episode here so thanks for watching and um the next episode will be a standalone ship design ex uh, 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 video uh, but now that we've got all this other technology it's the perfect time i just wish we had destroyers that's the one thing i really wish we had we are a bit, bit behind in that capacity at the, or that that aspect of the stage i'm guessing if we have a look at the almanac have a look at great britain uh do they have you've got basic torpedo technology i'm not seeing destroyers there either actually for them either all right so um that's okay we're, we're not seeing it. <laughs> we do have some spying going on in their in their territories. Actually, Spain is. Um, I'm surprised we haven't had a, a an approach from Sp from Spain to actually try to uh, you know make friends with us. Uh, anyway, so we've certainly been growing. We've been ready. We're sort of going to be ready now for the actual design. Thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next exciting episode. <laughs> I'll catch you then. <laughs>